in power are not listening to the demands for political or economic reform. Conditions for political participation have been so crafted that political pluralism has been curtailed, generating a feeling of powerlessness among many. Too much power is concentrated in too few hands. We need a new approach to government that involves the people in decisions that affect them. Those who make the decisions on behalf of others are too often not accountable. I will restore the sovereignty of the people and impunity and decentralized authority and power. It is my father belief and conviction that we can bring about change for a better Gambia by directing our efforts and political capital towards one end, the singular pragmatic goal of ushering in a new and third republic that brings progress by building strong democratic institutions. As institutions, repealing the obnoxious laws that restrict our freedom and liberty, building a strong economy and leveling the political playing field so that the sovereign will of the Gambians will always be there in their choice of life. I am committed, if elected, to serve for one five-year term only, working with all those who have the capacity and the commitment to salvage the Gambia as it taught us on the brink of total collapse. Nothing less than the fate of our nation and the future of our children hang in the balance. We cannot work it alone, neither can we turn back. Together, we can bring the change that is needed. Principles and values need not be compromised, but strategies and tactics must be flexible enough to make progress possible, especially under the difficult political conditions we currently face. Everything I learned in my years of work with the women, men, and the youth of this country, and in academia, has convinced me that Gambians need a president that will serve them. Not one that they should serve. Not one that looks down on them, but a president who will uphold the constitution, the rule of law, and restore good governance. A government that will bring economic prosperity to Gambians. People who want more say in the decisions that affect their lives. The old command and control and the uncontrolled politics. Doing things to and for people but never with them has not and will not work. True democracy does not mean voting every five years. True democracy requires the active participation of all of citizens in planning the development programs and activities for their localities working with their wards, like the development committees, and other development committees, allowing people affected to take leadership in advancing the best interests based on the common good. Together we can stop further degeneration of our beloved country and contribute to give it a new lease of life where hope, love, and appreciation of each other, respect for fundamental freedom, dignity of the passing, rule of law, and peace, will thrive in an entity that is nothing other than Gambia. Ensuring that, ensuring that nobody is victimized on the basis of tribe, religion, or political affiliation. For this is the true nature of the Gambian people. Gambians face a dire situation with the APRC regime, and every Gambian has a story to tell. But I urge you to muster courage and strength so that we can make the Gambia better. I seek your support in our quest to bring the Gambia out of isolation, to, bring, to build bridges and linkages with people of other nations in partnership that safeguard, protect, and promote the interest of the Gambia as a sovereign state. Gambia's interest is best served by engaging with other nation states and being part of the wider international community. I want us to usher in a Gambia that will bring on board the hearts and minds of all Gambians in the diaspora, including, including those who left the country because of the tribulations, the persecutions, fear, and abuses they face as private citizens, entrepreneurs, academics, politicians, and activists. But more than anything else, a new Gambia of economic prosperity, freedom, rule of law, peace, and stability. This country 
the youth of this country are frustrated and their hopes dashed under this regime. Those born at the cost of the Second Republic have now come of age. 20 years of APRC rule has failed to give them opportunities to fulfill their aspirations and achieve their goals. What their country has failed to give them, i.e. jobs, quality education, good health care and decent living, they try to seek elsewhere, embarking on perilous journeys across the harsh desert and the wild Mediterranean. The Gambian, the Gambian needs you most now of all times as nation builders and agents of change to build a better Gambia for us all. The belief that the APRC cannot be defeated by election is a misconception that works in their favor. Your votes can defeat the APRC and... Can a showdown be averted in Gambia? Leaders of neighboring countries fly in to try to convince the president to hand over power. Yaya Jame doesn't recognize the recent election result. Will he be given a safe haven if he agrees to leave? This is Inside Story. Hello there and welcome to the programme. I'm Laura Kyle. The walls seem to be closing in on Gambian President Yaya Jame. His term ends next Wednesday and regional powers are threatening to remove him by force if he does not step down. Jame insists the election he lost last month to Adama Barrow was rigged. Critics say he's holding on to power to keep his presidential immunity and avoid facing trial at the International Criminal Court. ECOWAS leaders are back in the Gambian capital, Banjul, after visiting last month. The president of Nigeria and other leaders from the economic community of West African states are trying to persuade Jame to accept the election result. Nigeria is considering protecting Jame from the ICC if he agrees to resign next week. Well, Jame appeared distrustful of Gambia's neighbours when he spoke to reporters on Tuesday. Our review and investigations have revealed an unprecedented level of foreign interference in our elections and internal affairs, and also a sustained smear campaign, propaganda, and misinformation. No foreigner can love this country and hold its highest interest to heart more than myself and the majority of Gambian people. So I will also be taking all possible steps within the Constitution and my conscience to do my part to resolve this sad impasse. Let's bring in our guests now. In Dakar, in Senegal, we have Sayul Tal. He's chairman of the Gambian Civil Society Initiative, hashtag Gambia has decided. He also recently fled the country after being warned of impending arrest. In Oxford, we have Sophie Gallup, who's a doctoral candidate at the University of Birmingham's Law School. And between 2013 and 14, she was a law lecturer at the University of the Gambia. And in Bamako, in Mali, we have Adama Guy, former director of information at the ECOWAS regional bloc. Great to see you all. Thank you very much for being here on Inside Story. Saliu, if I could start with you. We have regional leaders in Gambia on Friday trying to persuade Jame to step aside. Nigeria offering him asylum in return for immunity from prosecution. Is this situation acceptable to you? As a Gambian, our concern is we just want <coughs> ex-president Jame to accept the will and mandate of the will of the Gambian people. And any step that ensures that Jame leaves the country without causing any more damage to our people, we welcome this. Does he need to leave the country or what do you think of Adama Barrow's um, offer today for direct talks for him to be honored as a former head of state, again, not facing prosecution if he just stays aside? Ja uh, Barrow is saying that he doesn't have to leave the, con leave the country. Well, um, I cannot speak and do not speak for Adam Barrow. I, I think uh, 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 over 60 percent of the electorate did not vote for Jamie. And um, he's making every effort 
to ensure that the will of the people is not respected or heard. I think it is in the interest of the Gambian people for Jamia to leave the country with all due respect. I think I, I cannot speak for any victims. I cannot speak for any victims who may have the rights or otherwise. I'm not in a position to speak about I think what is more important for Gambians is to ensure that um, come on the 19th of November, the legitimate president of Gambia is inaugurated and Jame is not in the picture any, anymore. I believe his presence in the country can be cause for instability. Okay. Adama Guy, yeah. how hopeful are you that these regional talks will actually yield some results on Friday? Look, I think, uh, of course, Mr. Jame is a very uh, impredictable person, but at least since the advent of the crisis, ECOWAS, I think, has done the right thing. They've touched the right button, they've threatened him, but they have now cajoling him by offering him now a card instead of a stick. Mm. If Mr. Jami has a little bit sense of wisdom, I think he will cling to this opportunity offered him by ECOWAS, because other options may not exist. For instance, I've read in the media that uh, the Kingdom of Morocco wanted to offer him asylum. But I know for sure, because I've got the information, that this is not on the table. So he has the option to take this opportunity, but negotiate his exit strategy. He may be right to say that I don't trust West African leaders, because he knows in the past there has been an asylum offered by Nigeria to a former dictator, the former president of Liberia, Charles Taylor, but when he went to uh, Nigeria, Mr. Taylor, in Calabar, I think, he was uh, taken away from the country, from his asylum status, and handed over to the criminal court mm. in, in The Hague. This may pursue Mr. Jame specifically if his victims, his many victims, come up after his departure and show that he has done so much damage that any agreement can't uh, cover him. So the second step for him is want to take over the offer by the West African leaders, which is an opportunity for him, but secondly, is to find a safe heaven, mm. and that he may likely can only get it in places like Arabic countries, like Qatar, where the former president of Mauritania, Urdutaya, is hiding, or uh, one of those countries where the former dictator of Tunisia, Ben Ali, is hiding. I think that's his best bet, but he needs not play with time and miss the opportunity that ECOWAS is offering him. Otherwise, the only option with off the table would be the military solution. Do you think that there is an offer on the table from those countries that you mentioned, such as Qatar, to take Jame? Of course, these are things that need to be negotiated. But it needs to show goodwill first. But I suspect Mr. Jame, despite his bravado, is uh, already negotiating and... Uh, ground. Hmm. Uh, I heard from security sources that he was recently in Guinea Conakry and even people told me that uh, the former uh, governor of Lagos State, Mr. Bonat Kiyubu, was the uh, uh, hitman, the contact person between Mr. Jame uh, Alpha Conde, president of Guinea Conakry and the president of Nigeria. Also, once he agrees that he is ready and open to a uh, uh, diplomatic solution that will take him out of the country, there is possibility that these countries can talk collectively, talk to any of the Arabic countries where Mr. Jame will feel comfortable and get that accepted, as long as Jame shows the goodwill in the first place. But so far he's showing uh, to be strong-headed, to be somehow even suicidal. And that is the big problem that we are facing with this very unshaky character. Mm. Sophie, is this assurance of immunity from prosecution the only way to ensure that Jame does step down? Um, I can't say it's the only way. Um, I think that it's, in theory, a sensible option, but it does present a number of difficulties. On the one hand, um, if it does ensure a peaceful transition of power um, to Adama Barrow, then it, it should be welcomed, as Salio Tower was saying earlier. Mm. Um, the problem really is, is that it sets a very unfortunate precedent 